Hi, my Tubies and my Teletubbies. This is uh, part two for the narcissist is laughing at you. They see you as nothing but a joke. I made my first video and I asked for my Tubies advice and I appreciate it so much because you have given me different ways of looking at things. And, you know, that's that's always important. At the same time, I think I had like maybe three subscribers who unsubscribed, which I'm so happy that they unsubscribed because I don't need those type of people on my team anyway. When I make comments that, you know, women who are constantly putting up with this abuse, this man is cheating on you, this man is beating you up in your basement, right in front of your kids. And one of your children is your daughter and your daughter is sitting here witnessing this man beating you up. This man has been cheating on you. This man comes home at two, three, four o'clock in the morning. Your son is watching this. Your daughter is watching this. And they notice that mommy, mommy still has him here. Mommy's not leaving him. Mommy's not trying to get us out of here. They're sitting here watching this. So let's talk about the next generation that is sitting here witnessing all of this. They're witnessing how mommy, she's paying all the bills and daddy, he mainly sits on the couch and he plays videos and, you know, um, he might cook. Of course, daddy cooks because daddy wants to eat. So, of course, he's going to cook. So, he figures, well, if I'm going to cook, I might as well cook for everybody else anyway. He's not cooking because he's doing it to help make mommy's load lighter. No, he's cooking because he wants to eat. So, you have so many of the younger ones who was actually witnessing all of this. So, the three subscribers who unsubscribed, they sit up there telling me, well, you have to understand about soul ties. You have to understand about this. You have to, no, I don't have to understand anything about nothing. What I have to understand, or not, not even understand at this rate, is what I know is that these females who are putting up with this abuse right in front of their children, these are the most selfish, the most evil females of all time oh they can't get away because they don't have enough money you know if this was 40 or 50 years ago you know when women didn't have all of the help all of the information that we have today then I could definitely empathize I could definitely put myself in their place I could walk in their shoes if you will I get it but this day and age let's keep it real they have so many shelters for women. They have so many programs for women. They have so much information out here on Facebook, Twitter, um, YouTube, um, Reddit, uh, uh, Craigslist, even Craigslist have support groups. You can even go on the internet and type in supportgroups.com and then they have all of these things on domestic violence and they show you so many ways to get out. Even if you don't have a job, we are living in an age of information. So for these women to sit up here and want to talk about, um, well, I don't have a job. I don't have a way out. I'm so afraid he may kill me. No, honey, you do like a lot of other women have done. They picked up when he was at work and they picked up and they went into a shelter. These shelters don't give no information of where you're at. They help you relocate. They help you get jobs. They help you get on your feet. So for you to sit up here and constantly put up with all of this abuse. And you, you know what? It's one thing for you to put up with it for yourself. But you have children. You have, daughter, you have daughters. You have nieces. You have cousins, younger females. Like I know a female, she was getting beat up, man, in front of her kids in the basement downstairs. Why? The husband came home. The cat was looking in the refrigerator. He wanted to slam the cat's head all up in the door and all this crazy nonsense. She's still with him. Another female, she sat up here. This man raped her, sodomized her, beat her up, treated her like garbage. She was still begging for him not to leave her. Please don't leave me. Please stay. What? 
Yeah. W would that be she? No. Would that be she? The no. No. Why? Because I know that I'm a good person. And when you know that you are a good person, you can never, even if you wanted to try to stay, let's say you want to stay. But when you know who you are and you know that you're wonderful and you're a good person, how do you know whether you're a good person? You know whether you're a good person by your, your, your moral compass, what you truly stand for and what you believe in. And you see yourself the way God sees you. How does Jesus Christ see you when he looks at you? You know that God and Jesus Christ love you because they've helped you get out of so many bad situations and so many jams. And you know that you're a good person and good people don't deserve, they don't deserve to be beat up, abused. Somebody blowing up their, their, their temper, they're yelling at you. They are, how you say, um, screaming at you and treating you badly. When you know, you have to know. And oh God, you have so many females out here who have low self esteem. Forget, I'm sorry, I, I said something wrong here. Not low; they have no self esteem. Where did that come from? Where did that come from? Where you have no self esteem? You don't feel that you're worth nothing. Really? Is that the way God sees you? Is that the way Jesus Christ sees you? As long as you're doing things to help to try to make this world a better place, like if you're a nurse, like you're a nurse, they're, they're, they're healing people. They're making the world a better place. They're beautiful. They're amazing. You're a person who knows how to see someone who's all torn down, feeling bad about themselves, and you know how to just sit there and be a good listener. You know how to sit there and empathize. And then if they seem like they need some advice, you give the advice if they ask for the advice. Don't give advice if it's not asked for. But what you can do is be a good listener. Because being a good listener this day and age, let me tell you my two Bs, that's a skill. Because not too many people can do it. How many people do you know that know how to just be a good listener? I want to show you my cash app, man. I, I, I tell people, look, I will take your calls for $7 and I will answer your emails for $7. And the only reason why I put a price to that is because when I was doing it like totally for free, I was being overwhelmed and bombarded. So I just put $7, honey, let me tell you something. So I have these calls. They're still coming in. These people are not paying me $7. You know what they're paying me? I have this one woman. I don't want to mention her name because I don't want to, you know, I don't think that she wants it. Three times I've had phone calls. She sent me $250. Each time she talks to me, she sends me $250. I have other people sending me $149. They're sending me $50, $75. Uh, uh, I, do I appreciate it? Yes, I do. Thank you. I, I, I'm so ha glad that you appreciate me and uh, listening to you. And, and, and what, do, what do I do? I basically listen. The first two questions I ask my Tubies when they call me, number one is what is your question? Number two, what is it that you want to address? What, what is your purpose of calling? Sometimes they just want somebody to listen. And the money that people are paying just for you to listen is astonishing. $150, $250, $149, really? And then they have this other female I was looking on the internet. She's called a cuddler. She cuddles people. Guess what they're paying a cuddler? This is how lonely these men are. They're paying this woman $80 an hour. $80 an hour. Guess what she does for this $80 an hour? She just comes over or she'll, she'll let them come to her place, whatever the place she's at, and she hugs them and she cuddles them while they sleep. She's holding on to them. You know how you spoon when you're spooning with your man? She's spooning. No sex involved at all. No sex. Just spooning, cuddling them, and listening to them talk. So... When women feel that you think that we don't have the upper hand or it's such a male shortage, honey, you have so many lonely men out here. 
You do not have to sell yourself short. You don't. And, 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 and this with the people who have unsubscribed, I say good riddance to bad rubbish because I don't need weak people on my team. You know what I'm saying? I need people who are on God's team. And sitting around here thinking that you're on God's team just because you are you are an enabler. Well, you have got to understand they have trauma bonding. They have all of the, that's being an enabler. Let me tell you what I do understand. I understand we have way too much information, way too many support groups out here. We have way too many people who are willing to listen and people who are trying to help you. I hate to repeat myself, but if this was, what, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago, yo, then women, I get it. I would definitely say, I hear you, girl. You got to put up with this because, yup, because this is going to, yup, this, this. But this day and age, they have no excuse. You have men all on YouTube. Derek Jackson, Matthew Huzzy, Robert Blake. They're all trying to wake these women up. If you don't want to hear... The viewpoint from Deborah Cooper, that woman right there alone, D-E-B-O-R-R, -R, come on, Cooper. If that ain't going to help you wake up and realize that you do have options, sweetheart, then I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to tell you. I love you. The reason why I come so hard at you, maybe some people feel that I'm a little harsh. I don't mean to be harsh, but... um. I don't even want to say but because but I, I'm not, I don't mean to be harsh at the same time. When you love somebody, you look out, you try to take care of them, you try to give them information. What I do is I plant the seed and it's up to God whether it's going to grow. And, and if you're an atheist, it's up to you whether you're going to make that seed grow. All I do is plant the seed. Planting the seed means I give you the information. What you t choose to do with the information, that's on you. I have two beasts talking to me from all over the world. And the reason I say it's on you what you're going to do, because I can't be in California. I can't be in India. I can't be in freaking Chicago. I am in Albany, New York. You all want to move up here to Albany, New York? I'm here. We could get together, make a group. We're supporting each other. I love you like crazy. I can't be everywhere where you are. At the same time, I could plant these seeds and only pray to Jehovah God. Through Jesus Christ, please, Father, please help them to know how to protect themselves and how to stand up for themselves and not put up with this abuse. Jehovah God, please show them the way out. Please, Father. I love you so much, my tubies and my teletubbies. This is Sheila True Love. You always have a choice. And like the Bible says, please, please, please choose wisely. Until the next time, you know, you know, and I know we will definitely talk again. Bye for now.